In this video, we'll learn how to create a glittery effect in Inkscape. To start, I'll go to File, Import. I'm going to import this image of a silver glitter texture. You can find a link to this image in the description box below in case you would like to follow along. And the reason I'm using silver glitter is that it will make it easy to add colors later as we'll see. Alright, I'll double click the image, then click OK here. The first thing I want to do to this image is go up to the Filters menu, then down to Image Effects and click Sharpen More. This makes the image a bit less blurry, which will help with the effect. Next I'll go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rectangle that doesn't quite cover the entire image. I'll use this rectangle as a mask to mask the image, and in order to keep the image completely opaque for now, I'll change the color of the mask to white. Before I use the rectangle to mask the image, I'm going to add a couple filters to it. But I actually want to first group the rectangle, then add the filters to the group. This will allow me to enter into the group and add more objects, and those objects will get the filters automatically applied to them. So to group the rectangle, I can either right click it and choose group, or use the shortcut Control G. Alright, and with the group selected, I'll go to Filters, Scatter, Pointillism. This basically breaks up the color of the object into dots, and will make the glitter effect look even better, especially along the edges. Okay, and like with the image, I'll sharpen this up a bit by going to Filters, Image Effects, Sharpen More. Alright, and I don't actually want to use the group itself to mask the image, because that will cause the group to disappear, and I won't be able to enter into it. Instead, I need to use a clone of the group as the mask. Using a clone of the group will make it so that when I add objects to the group, they will be automatically cloned as well and become part of the mask. Okay, so to clone the group, I'll click this button up here that says create a clone. Finally, to mask the image using the clone, I'll go to the select tool, and with the clone selected, I'll hold shift and click the image to add it to the selection, then I'll right click and choose set mask. Okay, next, the effect is going to look better on a dark background, so I'll create a rectangle covering all of this and I'll make it black. Then I'll go to the Select tool and send the rectangle to the bottom by clicking this button up here. And when I go to add colors to the glitter, it's going to look better if I change the blending mode of the group. So I'll select the group and open the Fill and Stroke dialog. Then I can change the blending mode with this box at the bottom. I find that screen works pretty well, but feel free to try the others. Alright, I'm finally ready to enter into the group and add some objects. So to enter the group, I can either right click it and choose Enter Group, or I can simply double click it. And this rectangle here is actually just a placeholder for the drawing area. And I want to hide it now by selecting it and clicking the red X down here. Alright, now if I create an object in here and give it a fill color, it will have the glitter effect applied to it. Because we're using masking, when choosing colors for the objects, it's best to go with bright colors. If we make it too dark, the object will start to disappear. If I want to customize the effect a bit, I can first get out of the group by selecting an object that is outside of the group, like the background rectangle here, then select the group and go to Filters, then down to Filter Editor, which opens the Filter Editor dialog. The filter applied to the group is this one here with a check mark next to it. It's currently called Sharpen More because that was the last filter that I applied to the group, but this actually also includes the pointillism filter effects. If I scroll down to the bottom of the effect list, I had this one called Displacement Map. If I select it, I can change the effect scale parameter down here, which will affect the grittiness of the objects. Another thing I can do is go up to the Turbulence effect at the top, and if I set base frequency to something lower than 1, I can increase the size of the glitter particles. I'm also going to click the effect's name here and change it to Glitter to distinguish it from any other filters in the list. Okay, that's how we can create a glitter effect in Inkscape. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.